just getting off the shift at my other job and I, uh, I, it's already a warm 30 Celsius, so I can't wait to get in my shorts and t-shirt, but the job's a formal job, so I have to dress up. But I got this special, uh, little treat for, for Aiden, so I wonder if he'll, um, if he'll enjoy. We got, uh, half dozen Timmy's, and we've got two ice caps. I've got a third just for now, don't tell Aiden, but it's pretty warm, so I thought I can have one now and put the rest in the freezer, so I think it'll be great. Hey guys, Aiden here. Um, I'm just setting up right now. Oliver should be over in just a minute, but I thought I'd show you uh, what I was working on while he's not here. Um, as far as setup goes, I'm running, uh, I'm going to be running an AT2035 as a close mic for the piano. Uh, that's to capture all the prepared sounds. Uh, I'm also going to be running a, uh, a nice ORTF stereo pair over the head. And then, of course, we're going to have the H6 over here as a room mic. It's going to be quite nice. Um, it's a good little Swiss Army knife of a tool. Uh, other than that, I'm going to be complementing the piano with a, uh, a Reface CP, uh, a Moog Workstat, and an NTS-1. Uh, the Reface CP is just to give me an extra polyphonic option, um, mostly bell sounds and things like that. It also has really nice onboard uh, delay, reverb, uh, both digital and analog. Um, as for the Workstat, it gives me a really nice solid analog voice. It's great for drones because it has an envelope switch, so I can turn the envelope generator off. Um, other than that, the NTS-1, great for digital effects. The oscillators sound terrible, but that's not what I use it for anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm deciding whether or not to break, break out the, the uh, Behringer Poly-D. Uh, it might be overkill, but it might not be. We'll see. Um, but anyways, yeah, check in with you in a bit. And we made it! Aiden, say hi! Aiden, say hi! Hi, 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 hi! We've got Tim's. Let's do the great reveal. What do we choose? If you, okay. Oh, I didn't choose. Yeah, so yeah I chose. Six. Quickly in the comments below, what would you have if you had to choose six donuts from Tim Hortons? Okay, now it's the reveal. <laughs> oh! Classic two Boston cream. I know Aiden's a honey cruller oh, fan. Oh, yeah. And then the two yeah. odd ones out. Double chocolate's always good. And then the uh, sour cream glaze. So I think I'm we're... I'm after my own we, heart. Man, uh, <laughs> and we've got ice caps. And then we haven't set up the music yet. But, well, we do have some uh, uh, some mood-enhancing messe and organ music from La Nativité de... Uh, La Nativité... Uh, it's so weird to go from English to French like that. Nativité du Seigneur. Uh, yeah, man. So, we're getting in the mood! Woo! <laughs> okay, updating the video! The, the, the day's procedure is, uh... Whoa! And don't run over your cables! Lesson learned today. Right, Aiden? Yeah! <laughs> uh, anyways... filming a vertical? I... Oh, man. <laughs> it's okay, it's, you know... We have to leave that in. Yeah, yeah that's, that's okay. So we got interface... Got a uh, nylon string, electric uh, still in the case, amp, amp, uh, my pedals. What are we What are we going through today? We're rocking today, yeah. Oh man, you we got the line six this time. Yeah, yeah, finally powered too. Yeah. So last time I forgot the power supply. Big mistake. Uh, this time I remembered. So um, the entire board is as follows. Uh, into the volume, then the Proco Rat, then the uh, the Mod Factory by Moog. Sorry, mower. I'm dumb. I don't even know my own pedals. Mower. Uh, mower. Uh, and then uh, into the M9, the uh, El Capistan by Strymon, New Neighbor Wet, and e Electro Harmonics Freeze. Uh so, we have the open piano, <laughs> which has been slightly prepared, just a little bit. How'd you uh, prepare it, Aiden? How'd you prepare it? Just with some rope, just for dampening. Okay. Um, but it's open, so I can do anything I want at any time. And I got all my fun little toys on a towel, as every classical orchestral percussionist will tell you, always use a towel or something. Yes. Uh, I got the Behringer Poly-D over here, uh, four voice paraphonic, and then we've got uh, Reface CP for Rhodes and extra keyboard sounds, uh, uh, single voice Moog, and some digital effects. And we've got a nice pair of uh, stereo mics and Oliver in the background <laughs> recording the piano close. And then a room mic all the way over there. What are you using um, for your room mic, Aiden? I'm using uh, the Zoom H6 for the room mic. I can't see it, Aiden. It's 
right there all right. <laughs> and then the all the synths are running into this one amp being yeah recorded. hendrickson hendrickson bud uh six inch custom speaker 120 watt uh solid state amp five band eq yes yeah with the proprietary reverbs as well yes oh, yeah. uh, oh actually i kind of want to try those then Hi, I'm Oliver. And I'm Aiden. And this is the fourth episode of That, that Crazy, Crazy Music Show! <laughs> Today we're talking about revisiting classic film score arrangements. And particularly, we'll be looking at the famous Goldfinger arrangement uh, in found in the uh, early 60s, I believe, uh, James Bond film Goldfinger. Uh, the reason I was thinking about this recently is because uh, I heard two really amazing guitarists uh, play this this song uh, and rearranging it for their own instrument. Uh, first, I heard Bill Frizzell play it, uh, and I can put the link below for you to, to check it out because it's really worth checking out. It's in this longer uh, duo show with uh, a bass player he's, he was traveling with at the time. Uh, so uh, in maybe around midway through this interview slash concert, they play. Uh, they got this request to play a piece they've been performing, uh, the Goldfinger uh, theme. Uh, and then in his, I think it's in his most recent recording, uh, or I can't remember which album, but Ben Monder also plays the Goldfinger theme. Uh, and I was thinking, it's only got a like. Of course, it's an amazing film uh, score piece but also Bill Frizzell was a, a big influence in Ben Monder's music so I was thinking there must be a connection there as well uh, so I decided to uh, start working on it and, and graciously Aiden's uh, been willing to, to play it with me uh, I chose to play it in the key of D because uh, for the guitar at least in standard tuning uh, the the lowest second inversion triad and we'll get into that later but the lowest second inversion major triad I can play on the guitar uh, in closed position is B flat. And since the first chord change is down a major third, uh, then I had to go up a major third from B flat, so D. Uh, and um, yeah, so interesting perspective on how instrument related limitations could uh, lead you into different areas than maybe the original uh, film score arrangement for orchestra. Uh, but today we're gonna be playing uh, two different versions. Uh, the first is going to be a semi-faithful recreation uh, of this classic piece uh, done with guitar. And you have, uh, what are you playing through today, Aiden? Uh, I got a Rhodes keyboard and a Moog bass. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, together, a duo will be playing a faithful rendition and then a not-so-faithful rendition because, of course, th this is that crazy music show. So we have to get out of the box somehow, and uh, we're going to play something that's loosely related <laughs> to the theme of, of Goldfinger uh, as, a, as a, an experiment for today's episode. So without further ado, we hope you enjoy uh, our, our performance, uh, and we'll see you shortly.
and we're back! Wow, I, uh, I'm really happy that we did this actually because it was only yesterday uh, that I was, I was listening to the, the Goldfinger theme and I have like a pretty good idea of it. I was picking up the, the chords as well as the melody uh, and it might not be perfect or in the original key, but like it, you definitely know what song it is uh, and uh, Just to be able to like next day tell Aiden what chords it is and then play on it I, I was really happy and, and like um in the first version uh, To get that sound like I wanted a more uh, Like classic 50s 60s electric guitar sound so I used the the bridge pickup to get that slightly more single coil like bright sound uh, and then I had my amps uh, spring reverb at full tilt uh, and the spring reverbs on amps don't go for too long like you wouldn't get into ambient territory per se but it lends itself to that certain like 50s 60s guitar sound so uh, I had that all the way up and uh, yeah I, I feel like I captured that sort of uh, that era's guitar sound uh, and uh, we did that that piece justice um, and yeah, Aiden, you're, you're definitely doing a more uh, bass line and some additions uh, to, to the original uh, section, the, yeah. the first one. Um, and then the second one totally took off. Do you, like, what, what do you think, Aiden? Like, uh, well, as far as the first one, yeah. uh, just about my sound, it completely contrasts yours, right? Because I'm, yeah. I'm using that really dark, rich, like 60s, 70s road sound with yeah. a little bit of tremolo. Yeah. Um, and then a single Moog voice with the really nice creamy ladder filter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I just like the contrast between your brightness and my darkness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, onto the second one. Uh, as far as like developing ideas and things, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. I was just, I was just going for it. Yeah, I know, I know, saw like the two changes. quotes. Yeah. yeah, I learned the tune like an hour ago. So. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, Aiden, do you remember the Goldfinger theme? He's like, it's been so long. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's some really cool stuff happening. Just uh, the, uh, the the parallelism of of the, the initial theme, and it just whacks you over the head uh, down down a major third. Uh, well, and it goes places you don't expect it to. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Just thinking about the changes, like, uh, yeah, when it goes from da 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 da, and it goes from like a a seven flat thirteen flat thirteen to B minor, yeah, and then the B augmented, yeah, to the B minor like cliche line, yeah, but just if you think about it, diatonic to C, it works. It's a six minor chord to to D, but the um. We spent the whole tune going to B flat instead of B. So yeah. kind of yeah, as you but, say, it kicks you in the face yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and uh, it's it's weird because da 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 da. It's like D major now instead of D minor. So yeah. there's like a lot of uh, hidden uh, modal modulation between uh, the keys of uh, the the ma minor and major keys of D. Yeah. Uh, with with D being the 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 at least in our rendition, uh, that being the the home key. Yeah. Um. So it it's just you know, for film score arranging, I feel like that was the golden era. I'm like I if we can do more episodes on realizing uh, old film score arrangements in in this sort of duo uh, or trio format, then uh, I'd be really interested to check out some some of the music of Alfred Hitchcock's music. Uh, my brother was saying uh, that he was like he's a, a huge music uh, enthusiast uh, and and fan but not a musician per se uh, but he was saying that just out of sheer love of the music he was listening to Alfred Hitchcock's uh, uh, Vertigo soundtrack mm, uh, yeah. and the film score music for that is so amazing like uh, just to hear the arrangements uh, and when there is there yeah before the era of MIDI instruments, it was all live orchestra recordings, and there's a certain charm to that, I find. So I, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and, uh, and uh, if there's any other film scores that you'd want us to check out or, or realize in, in this format, uh, we'd be really happy to, uh, to check that out. So, so definitely let us know below. Um, as for that that ambient uh, second track though, oh yeah, um, the second one. <laughs> yeah, like I I was def I started on that that initial thing theme Goldfinger, 
Uh, it's a good thing I play guitar, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, uh, I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you're a good, good friend. Uh, the, um, but I realized that it was a sus triad. Uh, it hits uh, A, E, D, uh, so A sus 4 triad. Uh, or you could look at it as a, a D sus 2 triad. Uh, well, or if you do all four, you have the A on the bottom and the top. It feels very nice and yeah, enclosed, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the feeling I was going after. Okay, yeah, I was uh, curious. How you, to complement gonna... some of your less tonal lines. Yeah, yeah. I was I, grounding I, it with that kind of ambiguous A or D tonality. Yeah. But you it, can't really tell which. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, you know, it, it's well and good to, to play an experimental ambient rendition, but we've got to quote the melody somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you know, otherwise we couldn't really call it influenced or, uh, by Goldfinger. So starting it for sure, starting it with the opening theme was a must. Uh, but you and, added one note after another. You yeah. started with one, and then you went to two. Yeah, yeah. And then so you went with three. It's very hidden unless, yeah. you, unless you're unless you watching a Goldfinger episode well, and you know and what's coming. I mirrored the same thing with my entrance. So mm. with my entrance, I mm. also started with one and two and three. But by then, you were doing your own thing. Right, So it's right. even more hidden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. So many levels. <laughs> when you hear the layers, it's hard yeah. to hear the individual ones. And, uh, trying to quote... Uh, yeah, the, da, 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 da. <laughs> that that melody as well. And uh, Aiden, you're you're quoting the uh, the the major third. Da, 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 yeah, gold yeah. finger. Da, 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 Especially da. as like a tag on the end of your lines. Yeah, just to yeah. keep the thematic material relevant. Keep it it's together, also yeah. one of the two quotes I know from the two. Yeah. so <laughs> I was kind of stuck. Hey, no, it, it worked. It worked. Uh, I and you know that was just that was done in one take. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I, you know, uh, there's so many other ways it could have gone. Uh, but I, I, I kind of like the idea of just record once and see how it feels. And, and you really get that, that, uh, uh, all or nothing yeah. uh, feeling well, of, uh, that's of the, that. Yeah, that's the beauty and pressure of doing one take, right? Yeah, exactly. So you we, just you yeah. have to go for it, right? You have to go for it. You have to and go what you it. get is what you get. Yeah, and yeah. You well, just hope for the best yeah, and hang it. on for dear life. Yes, and hang on for dear life. <laughs> Especially when your, your synth can only tune with like that one Oh my knob. gosh. Do you want to explain it one more time for um, the audience? <laughs> so for my Moog bass, I'm using a Workstat, which is a single oscillator, single voice, mono synth, uh, funny, fully analog. So the good news is it sounds really good. The bad news is temperature affects the pitch. So as we play longer and the room gets warmer, the pitch starts to rise and rise and rise. Uh, and so I have to adjust with this tiny little potentiometer. But the issue is a synthesizer can a play... A knob for, for English-speaking folk. Yes. yes. <laughs> a it's tiny a, it's knob. a knob. You turn it. <laughs> but a synthesizer can play between like the whole range of the human hearing. So 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I only have one knob to control that entire range. So even if I move it a millimeter, that's like a whole octave. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's hard to be precise, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna solder on an extra potentiometer. A little mod. Yeah, so <laughs> I can get a, uh, a coarse and fine tuning. I think that'll, yeah. that'll help it. <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, well, thank you for sticking around this far in the episode. And, uh, and uh, we, we really do hope you enjoyed this type of content. And if you have any suggestions for, for future content, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed it and if you like the Goldfinger theme. Uh, <laughs> if you like uh, people taking uh, uh, famous themes and, and either re uh, faithfully recreating them or perhaps uh, doing their own spin on it. Uh, or as I say, just completely destroying the Or tune. completely yeah. destroying it <laughs> <laughs> while, while still quoting it sometimes. Uh, Anyways, that, um, we, we hope you enjoyed, and that was already the fourth episode of that crazy music yeah. show. I can't believe or that we're already... if you include the pilot. If you include the pilot. Oh so we're, we're already uh, over a month into, into making this, and uh, it's been a journey. We hope you, you've uh, enjoyed some of the small improvements we've made in our episodes. And uh, until next time, that was that crazy music show! I didn't do it this time. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>